more than three is stalking. Lots of goodies in this video that's going to teach you guys a whole bunch on social media for photographers, but also in there is a life lesson from whom? From me, from the bottom of my heart. Well, what's going on, you guys? Um, in my quest to fit in with all the other men in quarantine land is I decided to grow some kind of facial hair. It's only a day old, but um, it'll be gone by tomorrow. I already hate it. Didn't even give it a chance. I feel like I look like John Stossel. Today's video is going to teach photographers in video um, five platforms that you need to be a part of to boost your business. As a bonus, the bonus type of guy that I am in this video, somewhere in the middle of this video, I'm going to tell you guys why I was fired from my agency. And they fired me. And they fired me at midnight when they called me. And they were like, Walid. So diabolical, that voice. It was diabolical. Walid. What are you doing? And I should be sad. Cheap wine plus stress plus Waleed's big mouth plus no support down in second line equals chaos. Check this out. Besides the fact that you're going to learn five platforms that's going to help you as a photographer, I'm also going to give you some good, some gossip, and um, let's get started. Number one, let's talk about the platform that you are actually watching this video in and why it's so important for you as a photographer, not just why, how you can use it. YouTube, owned by Google. YouTube is the number two search engine in the world. YouTube is owned by number one search engine, Google. The thing about YouTube, what's different about it than Instagram or another platform is that on YouTube, we saw, we, at, whoa, I can't even talk. On YouTube, we actually ask the question, um, good wedding venues, Newport Beach, California. People are looking for inspiration. They're actively looking and you are trying to rank up and become a part of their answer. So they're ready to receive you. Find a way that you can highlight each and every single shoot, whether it's a wedding or a baby or engagement or products or um, LinkedIn portraits, anything like that, fashion, anything. How can you make a video out of it. So there are YouTube diaries that you guys can do. For example, let's just say your name is, um, I'm going to pick John Smith again. I've been picking on a John Smith. I don't know who this man is, but let's say you are John Smith and um, you just shot Tariq and Sabrina's wedding. And John Smith is like, I'm going to shoot this wedding. And it's an Islamic wedding. How can you use YouTube? You can't just make a slideshow. That's boring. No one's watching that. What you can do is say, Hey everybody, it's John Smith and um, I'm about to go photograph my first Islamic wedding and it's a beautiful uh, whatever whatever place in Newport Beach, California and here's the thing that I'm really cautious about or I'm anxious about but I'm so excited, number one, to learn about um, how this culture and how this religion fits into this venue that I've shot into a lot and I know that culturally there's going to be a lot of colorful clothing so I cannot wait to shoot it and then so you kind of do this video diary. There's a reason why I want you to consider doing this. When you do a video diary, what happens is that you are selling them on one core thing. I'm doing this on my iPhone. So if I see myself, sorry if I'm disconnecting with you, I should be looking at the camera right here. Okay. Forgive me. I want to see your personality. I want to, I want to hear you. I want to um, understand who you are. That's a huge thing for the YouTube platform because people aren't really YouTubing YouTube searching um, wedding photographers. They're, they're, what are they searching for on YouTube? They're looking for venues. They're looking for um, ideas. They're looking for behind the scenes of fashion shoots so they get an idea. They're just looking at general things. Hopefully you can pop in there and they're like, I really, really like him. And they discovered you because they were actually researching a particular location or a particular kind of dress or designer or a flower style. In the process, they found you because you vlogged about it and your experience of going to the same type of location. Big, big, big advantage for you because um, people hire based on the people that they like and they appreciate. So use YouTube for that. What's next? The one we all hate. Instagram, of course. We have come now to the one that we all think is a monster deep down. So let's get some monster horror movie lighting right now. And that is Instagram. Instagram used to be fun. Instagram was like this 
Oh, I look horrible. Um, Instagram was like this thing that was so much fun and we loved it. And then every week, every month, they kept chipping away, chipping away. And they cannot see your friends, cannot see your family, cannot see the people that you follow. So Instagram is sort of like a platform. It's your portfolio for photographers and other creatives. It's where we go to verify people. So if you're on Instagram, you better be a public profile. First of all, um, you want to post pictures. You want to humanize your photography. Humanize your photography tell a story why did you shoot there where did you shoot what were the obstacles why do you love this subject people want to know because we got to stop the scroll and if everyone constantly is scrolling what is going to make them stop it's a story humans of new york um he tells a story barack obama had left comments on it and it really has left a mark on um social culture and it has made a lot of people copy humans of new york and do humans of like Culver City. I don't know if there's such a thing and there should never be. You want to make sure that you respond back to everyone's comments back with a question. So if I leave a comment on your picture, don't go <laughs> like a, a funny little emoji or any of that stuff. Don't do that. That's rude. Somebody actually stopped their scroll. They read your thing or they uh, looked at your picture or your video. And then you're just like, they wrote you a full sentence and you hit back an emoji. If someone leaves you a comment so i could say such a beautiful sunset such a beautiful sunset i love culver city in the evenings i don't know why i'm picking on culver city right now but i am you don't give me a little emoji and so bad for your business what you should do is thank you so much waleed so you acknowledge me and i and i get that notification and i feel validated because i need to feel validated that's what social media does to us then the second sentence is a question when was the last time you were in culver city when you're here, will you please give me a call? I would love to meet up for coffee. That makes me want to respond back. That means I'm like, oh, cool. You actually give a damn and you wrote me like two sentences. So I'm going to respond back. Three. You want to go more than that. More than three is stalking. They left a comment. You responded. They leave a comment. You just like it. And that's it. Four is stalking. Three is good engagement. Why is that important? Well, as a photographer, you want to make sure that as many people see the account as possible by making sure that you bring up the engagement on your page. And by bringing up the engagement on the page, you're making Instagram look good. By making Instagram look good, you're making that Mark Zuckerberg even more wealthy. All right. So by increasing the engagement on your page, they're going to reward you with a few little nuggets of goodness. And what they're going to do is allow more people who chose to follow your account actually see your posts. It's such a sick game, but Instagram on average shows only about 5% of your followers what you post. It's actually, it's ro it's a complete robbery, but I'm afraid to say something because they might hurt my algorithm. So they own me at the same time. Don't just show me a pretty picture. Tell me about the story. Tell me why I should give a damn about that picture. And then I will give a damn about that picture. Okay. Social media, social, socialize, uh, socialize with society. I made that up on the spot. It's not even that brilliant, but Instagram is one audience. YouTube is another audience. Your website, your website is so important. I, I said platform. I never said social media on Instagram. If I see your picture, there's a picture above you, a picture below you. If I even get to see your picture, um, I'll see it in low res and I'll see it this big. That's it. There's probably an ad before you or after you. There's probably a competing photographer before you or after you. There's probably a DM coming in or notification coming in. It's like, imagine your clients are seeing your work. Hey, 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 hey. It's so distracting. They cannot focus on you. So if you can say, check out my work on my website, the link is in the bio. Now you've taken them from Instagram, from your YouTube or from your TikTok. What did I say? TikTok from your TikTok and you put them on your website, what you just did is you held their hand, um, you took him to a private place so you can show them more of you. Once they're on your website, they get to see your pictures in the order that you put them there. They get to see your pictures in high resolution. They get to see your picture after your picture, after your picture, after your picture. No ads, no competition, no distractions, no DMs, no notification. It covers a full screen. At the bottom of every single gallery is a contact page for you or a contact link. You're going to win very, very big by having a website. Anytime I hire somebody, um, another photographer, I need to hire somebody because I'm creative directing for a client. I can't shoot it and I bring in a photographer. If you don't have a website, 
I don't think that you're a professional. I don't pay you like a professional. What a jerk I am. No, I'm not. That's the real world. I want to help you guys do good in the real world too, which is where I work, which is where I want to work with you guys. But here's the other thing about websites. When somebody goes on your website, they've already said, I'm willing to leave this social media platform. When you click a link, most social media platforms will say, you are leaving the site. Are you sure you want to go? They're basically saying, y'all want to come back? They've already committed to you. Commitment's hard these days. That has told you probably really love your work, actually. That is a qualifier. On Instagram, it's so easy to get a DM. We don't know if they're serious or not, but once they've clicked your link on your website, then they've gone to your contact page. They like you. They want to talk to you. So when they contact you, you know that it's a lot more qualified and a lot more real. See how I'm sweating? That's from spinning. I feel nauseous. Um, let's spill some tea though. So I had an agent and I've had agents throughout my career several times. It's never really worked out with them because I don't think I found the right agent to represent me and to know how to market me. So I've always known how to market myself. I'm going to try to cut through the story real fast, but it tells you how social media can go wrong if you do it the wrong way. I had an agency that I never felt like they were doing anything good for me, that in fact, they were a little bit envious even of the jobs I was booking myself, which was all of my jobs. What's going on out there? And they would say things like, oh, you're not marketable. Oh, you're not this or that. And I'm like, well, I'm getting booked and I'm booking myself and I'm booking myself with like big companies and big brands. You know, it's kind of like in a relationship when, when the other person tells you um, you're not good enough or whatever, and you end up realizing after you break up that they were and you were the shit, you know? So I got a job to, I'm gonna try to keep every innocent and guilty party anonymous. I got this job to direct a music video for a particular kind of recording artist. They asked if I can do multiple videos in one page or in, in one day. And I said, sure, I can do that. I'm up for torture. I'm up for chaos. We were doing everything really, really good. I mean, it was moving very fast. It was a newer artist. Don't try to look it up. I'm not. It's nowhere on my website. I've scraped the internet of all information around this shoot. And so it doesn't exist. Don't try to look for it. Um, what had happened was on the day of the shoot, they practically had a Walid parade. And I've never seen one until that day, a Walid parade. Like they were like, you're so amazing. You're so brilliant. Thank you so much. We owe you. We owe you Hollywood talk, which means it's nothing. Everything was good. And then I had to edit it. And the thing with editing is that I give in my contracts, you get two rounds of edits, anything additional. We are billing at a certain predetermined rate, which I encourage you to do that also. I turned in one cut. They're like, oh, it's way off. And I'm thinking way off, way off. Like you saw it on set on the monitors. Like it was a full professional set with the video village and everything. I took their notes and I edited it again. And they were like, oh, it's way off again. And I'm like, I followed your notes. Like you said at this time code, this needs to be removed. I removed it. What What the hell is the problem? Went to edit number three, edit number four. We've already broken the contract. And I'm telling my agency, hey guys, are you going to look out for me? Are you guys going to protect me? And they're like, oh, Walid. But you know, the, the record label um, said that one of the producers on the album is a very famous producer. And I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. You know, like contract's a contract. I know, but you know, and at the time, um, e even now, I don't know, That's I'm keeping it very vague, may or may not be true, that this producer was very closely associated with somebody from the Housewives of Franchise. I'm not going to tell you what city either. They wanted to really kiss up to this person at my cost. So I grin and bear it and I'm not happy. Listen to your gut feelings. When your gut feeling says this stinks, get out of there, right? But I didn't and I, I love torture. I'm working on that. It was just like late night after late night after late night. And I'm in my studio at the time. It was like this big 5,000 square foot studio in downtown LA. And I decided around midnight, I'm like, I am so tired. No one has my back. I have my back and everyone is telling me, oh, Walid, you know, who cares about the contract? Just do it, just do it. And I'm like, I care about the contract and you should care about the contract. That's what we do in business. It holds our word, but okay. You know, should have been red flag number 6,004 for me. I decided to pour myself a refreshing glass of Trader Joe's $2 wine. At the time, it was actually $2.99, so it's a little classier now. I feel good, and what you guys don't know is that I'm a lightweight. So a glass of wine, I'm like, oh, I feel really good. I invited myself to have a second glass of wine by myself as I'm editing, and I'm angry, and like the hate is starting to fester up. The second glass of wine is making my head spin. 
By the way, when I filmed that B-roll, that's why I got all sweaty. I'm like, oh, my stomach, I don't feel good. I decided to pour myself a third one. Now, you all know if I said that I'm a lightweight, things are not going to go well. So I told you an equation in the beginning of this video, alcohol plus Waleed plus at this moment, this brilliant idea taps me on the shoulder and is like, you know what, Waleed, you need to tweet about this. I was like, I think I should tweet about this. I should, it's late night. I've had some alcohol. That would be the best thing for my career. Tell them, tell them what happened. Tell the whole internet. So I tweeted and I didn't tweet at her uh, or him or him. I don't, I'm not telling you anything about the artist. So I didn't tweet at the person. I left something very passive aggressive, which is unlike me anyways. And I said, I was not drunk. Um, you know, I, nothing sucks more than when you are hired for your particular look and style and then it's watered down to utter garbage and i sent it but the remorse hasn't come in yet i have more to say because i felt good because finally somebody heard me the internet i decided to go dot 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 because we only get 180 characters and i say but if you want garbage i'll give you garbage but I will never put my name on that product or put it on my website. And then I put it and I was like, okay, get back to editing. You know, I like cleared out my thoughts and my chest. The next day at midnight, like almost like a full 24 hours, I get this call from the owner of the agency. And he had this diabolical voice at the time. And I, I still laugh at it. And he's like, okay, hold on. Try not to laugh. Wait, hold on. Wally. <laughs> and and I was like, hello? And the owner of the agency is like, what are you? I can't even go that deep. It was diabolical. What are you doing? And I'm like, hello? What are you doing? And I'm like, what? And he's like, what are you doing? Why are you on Twitter? I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like the Twitter thing came in my mind. I'm like, oh my God, 24 hours ago, I tweeted up a storm. <gasps> I apologize to the agency owner because I never want to destroy anyone else's business. I don't want to do it for my own business either, but I'm letting you guys know that it happens. And they sent me to the record label to apologize. Let me tell you how the artist found out. The artist was a newer artist and this human landed at LAX from Berlin. And try not to laugh when I say this because I truly have no remorse because it was just such a bad situation. I don't. I've had a perfect career except for that stain so she doesn't have a lot of twitter followers okay so that means my tweets came to the top of her feed and she was following me and i was following her back and i forgot damn it and apparently the dramatic person that this artist is i hope i didn't give the gender i did whatever it's half the population but the dramatic artist that this artist is apparently this artist collapsed <laughs> apparently this artist collapsed on the floor of lax from the trauma this person collapsed and called a superstar producer at like midnight superstar producer called label executive like at midnight also oh my god my artist what is going on label executive called the uh agent my agent at the time who hates me probably at midnight or probably 12 30 at this time agent called owner of the agency at like 12 30 12 45 that's when i got the call with that diabolical what are you doing oh my god social media can be super 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 powerful or super helpful good or bad so just be careful what you guys put out there now i'm being honest with you guys about that because when you look at my career i've had very smooth sailing quality of work and the kind of clients that i've had but even the best of us, we have hiccups. That was not a hiccup. That was a stroke. Let me just fast forward to what happened. I got fired from my agency on that phone call. Then the owner of the agency caught himself. He's like, no, 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 I didn't want that. I didn't want that. But well, here's what it is. I also didn't have the courage to leave the agency months ago like I wanted to. And so I feel like subconsciously I sabotaged this project and my future with this company. That's what a book told me I did. But this was my chance. Like, even though I suffered that trauma at the moment of like, oh my God, what did I do? I was still like, oh my God, you just got fired from the agency. What you never had the courage to do and what you should have done. 
So in the end of his sentence, no, 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 I take it back. I take it back. You're not off the roster. You're not fired. I'm sorry. We'll fix it. I. But me seeing the opportunity, I'm like this. No, 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 no. I'm out. I'm out of the agency. I'm out. You cannot serve me divorce papers and ask me out to dinner in the same night. He was surprised that I even said that. I'm surprised. I don't even know where I learned that from, but it just right out the mouth. I said that and he was like, okay. And I'm like, no, I'm out of the agency. So I went home. I was kind of so sad. I was so disappointed, but I was so happy because I got fired from agency and I've been wanting to do that. And I wanted to share the story with you guys because um, there's so many casualties. I changed my Trader Joe's because of this. This artist shopped at the same Trader Joe's. I found that out on set somehow. Like, you know how you have your own grocery store? So she had the same Trader Joe's as me. I had to change my Trader Joe's. And if you are a creature of habit like me, you know what a difficult sacrifice that was? I traded in my Trader Joe's. So I didn't run into her in the middle of like an aisle and I threw polenta at her. I'm not throwing anything at anybody. I don't know. I probably wouldn't do anything. I probably just look down like this. This artist unfollowed me on Twitter and, um, and, and I still think it's funny. Like, how do you fall apart? I didn't even tweet at you. It wasn't even like, it was clearly about her, but I didn't tag her. So I was hoping that she would believe our excuse of like, no, it wasn't about you. It was about another client. Anyways, um, her instincts told her that it was about her. It was absolutely true that it was about her. And you make mistakes and you get back up and you do it. And that's how I got fired from my agency. Now, why is that in this video? Social media is super powerful. Social media is super dangerous if you do it the wrong way. So um, that's also why Twitter is not on my list. I'm, I have PTSD with Twitter. Twitter. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Okay, TikTok is where older people are not welcome, but they were coming anyways, and we're not gonna let that stop us, okay? So TikTok is a wild, wild west right now of where social media is going. How do you monetize it? How do you grow really fast? People are growing super fast. And um, the thing about TikTok is it's one minute or less. So how are you gonna fit in? And there's different themes that they're really promoting, and there's really cool filters and backgrounds. So what I would tell you right now is, it's a younger audience or people that are younger mentally and that they're willing to accept certain kinds of platforms. So what you can do is make the same video, literally hold up your phone and go, hey guys, I'm Waleed. So today I'm doing a fashion shoot for such and such brand and here's what it is. And just move it really fast, quick, and that's it. Just be you and people will attract and gravitate towards you. So YouTube is a longer form. Um, TikTok is a short form. YouTube is like the full meal. TikTok is the crouton on the side salad. Whatever it is, it's an intro. It's the first bite size into who you are. And they make it very easy to link your YouTube channel and to link your Instagram channel. So TikTok is very good. TikTok also allows them to download the video very easily. So if you are going through your pictures, maybe one way you can do it as a photographer is, hey guys, I am going through the gallery of so-and-so or whatever brand. And it... I had so much fun doing it. So I'm gonna show you guys a little preview of the gallery. By the way, I go through Lightroom and this is a four hour process, et cetera, et cetera. Keep it under a minute, keep it fast. You can add some music to it. You can add some titles to it. Get in, get out. The other thing about TikTok is they're really doubling down on um, local, being able to pop up on people's feeds that are local to you. So if you are a local photographer, you're local somewhere, this is a really, really good thing. Take advantage of TikTok and you can even use the same footage of your YouTube, just repurpose it, do it the longer way for TikTok and that's that, okay? You just stay consistent with your branding and it'll work really, really good for you. Another final thing about TikTok is at this time, my Instagram, which is right there, about four years old, is about somewhere 65-ish thousand followers. My TikTok, which is right here, is about 32,000 followers, and that's in about five or six months. Number five is Tumblr, and here's how it's gonna help you as a photographer. Little red light district here. Y'all know what number five is. It's that filthy place that people used to go to for certain kinds of pictures or videos. Tumblr is special in that it is a micro blog. Um, I want you guys to get a Tumblr, it's free. And there are still are people on it. The people that have left it in mass, mass, mass numbers were looking for porn and you're not offering porn. If you are, that's another kind of photographer and I'm not anyone to judge. 
the thing about Tumblr is that people that wanted to come for that one reason, they're no longer there, but there's still other people. So it's about quality, not quantity. The other thing about Tumblr is that they can retumble your uh, blog posts. So that's big. Now, if you actually have a blog on your own website, like a Squarespace or a Wix, what that means is if that website does not rank very well in Google, then that blog doesn't rank very well. And there isn't a network built in with that blog. So with Tumblr, you are posting that on Tumblr. So other people can follow your Tumblr and you can follow other people's. And a lot of things are constantly liked and constantly reblogged. That's really big for SEO. So that's a big thing about Tumblr. The second part is that you can actually link the Tumblr to your website. That's important. So when they go to your website, it just says blog. Normally, like a Squarespace or Wix offers a blog, but in this case, your link doesn't take them to another page within your website. It takes them just to another page and it opens up a new tab and they get to see your blog post. What would you put in a blog post as a photographer? Well, look, you cannot overwhelm people with so many pictures in your portfolio. So if I have a fashion shoot and I love eight pictures, I can't put all eight pictures on my website because there was a shoot before that and before that and before that and after that and after that and after that. I can't rain people on high quality pictures. What I can do is put one or two of those on my website and then the rest of them can go on a blog post. On that same one, I'm also putting like a video diary of that one shoot from my YouTube channel. I'm putting additional pictures. If I could only put one or two pictures on my gallery, why don't I put five, ten, eight, whatever on my Tumblr because that is allowed. I'm more likely to take that direct link from your Tumblr and post that out there on my social media. If you can just put it out in Tumblr, that's one more salesperson out there finding you clients. When you put it on your website, that's another salesperson finding you clients. You YouTube about it, that's another salesperson going to another social media channel getting you clients. You put it on TikTok, we don't know what's going on there yet, but that's going to get you clients also. So you want to diversify and have many streams of publicity for your business. That's Tumblr, it's free. It allows it to be retumbled for you. We're gonna change this light up, this red light. So that's Tumblr. Get on Tumblr. You get to put more pictures. People get to promote it more. People within Tumblr get to retumble it for you. Um, it is a second place. So maybe Tumblr gets you ranked on Google before your own website. Why wouldn't you do that? And why wouldn't you share that with people? Overwhelm them with you and your personality. Okay guys, so that time of the video, if you enjoyed the way I tell stories or if you actually learned something, which is hopefully the goal, um, definitely subscribe to this channel. I help photographers do well. I help photographers make money and establish their business and learn how to light and shoot the right way. So click subscribe down below, hit the little bell. And then finally, if you have any questions, every time I premiere a video every single week, I always, Go So turn on that notification so when I post a video, just know that in the first 30 minutes, I always answer everyone's comments at like a full paragraph comment and I help you out as much as I can. So if you ever have any questions on your photography and you just need someone to help you, leave a comment down below. I'm happy to help you. By the way, if you want to see more of me on set, click that right there. If you want to learn more about marketing, click that right there. And I promise you I was going to get rid of this John Stossel stash. Click here, right here. I feel better. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.